So the big news uh, in the, out of uh, Detroit, actually, uh, Auburn Hills uh, last week was uh, the big five-year plan from uh, Chrysler Group, Fiat Chrysler now. So for that, we're going to talk to Brent Snevely from uh, Detroit Free Press. How are you, Brent? Very good. How are you doing? Thanks for uh, having me on this morning. No, thank you very much uh, for your time. I know it's been uh, crazy because uh, I, they gave you a five-year plan in, uh, in one morning, so I bet it was like a lot of information there, right? to digest and process. Yeah, this was um, this was a pretty intense day that uh, started at 8.30 in the morning and lasted until after 7 p.m. in the wow. evening. You know, I give, I give Fiat Chrysler and, and Mark, uh, Sergio Marchioni, the CEO, you know, a lot of credit here. No other automaker, really no other company that I know of, um, you know, sits down and opens its books and makes uh, and, and presents its goals with this kind of specificity for the next five years like these guys do, it gives us a lot of ammo in the media in the years to come to say, hey, you said you were going to do this, but you fell short, and, and um, that's, a, that's a big risk for an automaker like this. Yeah, not only for the media, but also for consumers, because, I mean, that's at the end of the day who are really aiming to, right, to sell their cars to. Absolutely, and I should mention Wall Street, too, which which will, which will benchmark these promises. So, uh, Brent, what was uh, the, the, I guess, I mean, it's a tough question, because what's the, the, the number one highlight uh, besides what you just mentioned? I mean, like, is there a product, a brand, something that really caught your attention? Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of got a lot of stuff that we expected, but a lot of details that we, that we didn't expect. It. I think um, one, of the, one of the least expected things, and, and perhaps most interesting, is that they, with, with Chrysler, <laughs> You're going to see a big change in, in the image and, and the way they brand the Chrysler brand. For years, Chrysler has been walking around trying to present itself and, and, and pretend that it's luxury or premium, and, and they're not going to do that anymore. They're, they're going to present Chrysler to the world as a mainstream brand um, that, that will compete with Ford. Ford, Honda, Toyota, etc. Along with that, you'll see, an, and right now, the Chrysler brand actually only has three models. The minivan, the 200, and the 300. So over the next couple of years, you'll see them add the subcompact 100. You'll see a, an updated minivan, and you will see a, a new crossover vehicle. So there's that. The corollary with that is that the Dodge brand will change a lot as well. The the, the the Dodge brand is losing the Avenger, and it'll be it, it'll be refocused to it already is sort of the the company's performance brand. But you'll see even more of an emphasis emphasis on its identity as sort of a muscle car performance brand. Yeah. Um, and then I can go into other things too. The Alfa Romeo. And but uh, let's let's go back. Intriguing as well. Yeah, let's go back a little bit to Chrysler because even though they they say they're not gonna present themselves as a premium brand, I mean the gap I think that in between like the regular cars and like luxury brands like Honda from to Acura they don't see much difference Nissan Infinity I mean there's some especially in the price I will say <laughs> but the technology has leveled up uh, the, the field uh, I, I think now what's your opinion on that I mean the, the 200 the new 200 should be called 220,000 because it's like many many times better than the old one. Oh, absolutely the, the new 200 you really should help Christ, the Chrysler brand this year and it is you know, it is it is finally you know a competitive midsize sedan. Um, I don't know that it I don't know that it blows away you know uh, uh, the the Fusion or the Accord Camry Sonata, but it is at least um, competitive and looks really good and has good technology um, and, and, and will drive much better. And I think you'll see that. I think what you'll see is the Chrysler models will will match that level going forward in the future. Yeah, I was comparing it to the old version of the 200, which was like really uh, in, in, in a world that really there aren't really bad cars anymore. I think that was one of the worst before this one. Yeah, oh, easily, easily, easily was. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned also Dodge, so it's going to be more a performance car, and they bring in, in like the SRT division, like uh, the high performance car into that. They they had like a two-year experiment going on their own. I guess didn't work that well, huh? Right, yeah. You'll see, um, you know, Fiat you know, Chrysler sort of established the SRT performance brand two years ago. Um, that is really kind of a small uh, niche thing. Now that will really kind of be combined I into the Dodge brand. Uh, the other big thing that I should mention with both to, that relates to Dodge and Chrysler is you now Chrysler will get the new minivan. Dodge will lose the caravan. Dodge will no longer have a, a minivan. Um, 
It will, however, gain a, a crossover vehicle. And going on to other brands uh, from from the group, I mean, it's it's becoming like a. I mean, it is a big group. I mean, and I don't know, Fiat, Maserati, Ferrari, like really fine brands. Alfa Romeo, it's coming back. So it's. Uh, I think they're going reverse from what happened in the bankruptcy years for GM and, and Chrysler when they were like slashing down like brands, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this kind of has, has, is a topic that has kind of fascinated me personally. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, if you think about GM, when it went through bankruptcy, they they sold Saab, they shut down uh, Pontiac and and Saturn. Uh, um, Homer. So they came out with four brands. You know, Ford even before the recession was selling off and closing down brands. Mercury doesn't exist anymore. Fiat Chrysler has more or less gone the opposite direction, has expanded brands, and that's a challenge to fill each brand's lineup, uh, and let alone separate marketing identities, et cetera. Um, but, you know, you're right, it ranges, it ranges from, you know, Chrysler on one end, Jeep SUVs, uh, up to Alfa Romeo, Maserati, and Ferrari, and, and it's, it's quite, quite stunning. Pretty good, pretty good collection of cars, like it would be nice to have one of each in your garage, I guess, <laughs> if you could yeah. afford it. So, uh, Alfa Romeo, it's coming back with a 4C, uh, small, uh, high-performance car. That's going to be a, a tough uh, situation because, I, from what I understand, they're not opening really Alfa Romeo dealerships, right? Yes, the, the dealership question with Alfa Romeo is, is intriguing. Uh, we finally, at the very end of the day, got a clear answer from Marchioni on what the dealership plans are. I mean, there may be more plans in the long run, but at least initially, um, what you're going to see is both um, Fiat and Maserati dealers will sell Alfa Romeo. But um, you, you probably won't. I mean, the high-performing Fiat dealers will get a shot at selling Alfa Romeo, and then and Maserati dealers as well. Yeah, and I'll back up and say, you know, one thing about this plan is it's very ambitious across all of these brands in terms of its growth projections. Um, Alfa Romeo is a is a big is a is a big example of how ambitious they are. You know, Alfa Romeo effectively sells zero cars in the U.S. You yeah. know, in 2013, this plan projects that they will be selling 150,000 annually by 2018 as they launch uh, eight new models globally. Wow. Um, and they're going to spend about seven billion dollars to invest in the product development, the platforms, the manufacturing, etc. You know, so think about this: 150,000. Audi sold, sold 8,000 vehicles last year. So you're talking about a plan that where they think that Alfa Romeo could be a player as big as Audi by 2018, going from zero to that status, which is, like I said, very ambitious. Yeah, very optimistic. I mean, but uh, I mean, I, I, I think, uh, well, we'll see. I guess, I mean, as you said, they, they put themselves into risk of like failing at that, but like maybe hopefully it, it, they won't fail. So um, and for the consumer, what does this mean? Like this huge company like now makes Italian cars in Toluca, Mexico for the Fiat, and then they're going to build Jeeps in Italy, like the new Renegade. I mean, what does that mean for consumers in a, the global world that we live now? Yeah, I, I think... Um I think you always have to remember that, you know, in 2009, Chrysler declared bankruptcy, uh, you know, received some aid from the federal government to survive, and that, and no, nobody, nobody wanted to buy Chrysler except for Fiat. The, you know, Obama task force nearly allowed Chrysler to fold completely. Yeah. So I think, you know, f from the consumer standpoint, you have a company which found a way to live and survive, that have a chance to perhaps thrive in the future. And you've got this vast array of brands, depending on where you are and your income level, um, you've got a lot more choices because of the fact that Fiat Chrysler, you know, has, has survived and is now, uh, you know, putting itself together as a joint automaker and offering vehicles from from Jeep. Well, somebody would have bought the Jeep brand, but offering yeah. vehicles from Jeep and Chrysler and Dodge up to Ferrari, Maserati, and Alfa Romeo. Yeah, excellent. We're talking to Brent Snavely, who covers uh, re on a regular basis the Chrysler. The, what is the name, of the official name now? Fiat Chrysler Group, right? Uh, <laughs> industry for uh, the it's a longer answer than perhaps you may want to know. <laughs> Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, or FCA, will be the official name 
by the end of the year. It actually is not a legal entity that exists today, even though they put an FCA sign up in front of their headquarters earlier this week. Yeah. Fiat shareholders will approve that new name at some meeting sometime this summer, and then by the end of the year, the goal by the end of the year is to list stock on the New York Stock Exchange under the FCA name and the new and the new corporate name. Yeah, man. and then uh, to 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 end the week, they announced that they're going to move the headquarters to London, which uh, I mean, it's, it's another uh, the the cap to the to the busy week for you, huh? Yeah, uh, here again, things are not. In, in Fiat Chrysler and Marchioni world, things are not always what they may appear. Marchioni said clearly yesterday, London will be the headquarters of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. But what does he really mean by that? He put together uh, Fiat Industrial and CNH as well, um, which is a, a global uh, agricultural manufacturing equipment company. Their headquarters is in London. They've got like 20 people there. Yeah. This, this, this London quote unquote headquarters, I think, will employ, you know, two, three dozen people. Uh, very important functions will be managed out of there. But at least at this point in time, neither Auburn Hills nor uh, Turin should worry about a big loss of employment or status. Excellent. Um, because of that. Okay. Brent Stavely from Detroit Free Press, and uh, that's where we can find all your information, right? Yes, absolutely. Free.com is the website, and B. Snavely is my Twitter feed. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll be following you. Thank you again. And thanks a lot. Appreciate you having me on. Bye. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.